So what happens when our diene and the dienophile have substituents? Well, so let's take a look at this down below. So there's just two cases that are going to occur here that we need to be familiar with. So let's take a look at case number one here. So what we're going to do here is um, pretty interesting. It's something that we have to watch out for. So the problem might look something like this. So you might see your diene, but we're going to put a group over here. Okay, we're going to put this here. And then to this, we're going to add that. Okay, so two things to remind you of here. The first is that this is an electron withdrawing group. So this is an electron withdrawing group. And then the other thing is that we have here is a substituent. Um, an atom that has a lone pair on it. So this is an electron donating group. Right? Now, in theory, this could be added a couple of different ways. Well, first thing that we need to remember here is that this is always going to point in the endo position. So we already know that that's going to be the case. But the question is, how are these going to align with each other? Right? So that's what we have to look at. So right, the, kind of the, the idea here is this, as far as the reaction. So here's our question. So the question is, do we align the molecules like this? Right? So let's keep that stationary. So with the dienophile, do we add it in so that the CHO group is on this down position? So, right, down, right, or do we add it in this position where this is up? And that's the question that we need to answer. Right, because it could lead to two different regioisomers with possible enantiomers. So it turns out that there's one of these arrangements that works. So if we leave this locked in that position, it'll be either this, right, or this. So to answer this question, we're, we're going to have to look at resonance. It's not really hard here, but let's take a look at the structure of the diene. So we have a lone pair bearing atom adjacent to a pi bond. So that is one of our resonance structures. So that structure is going to give us plus charge here, and I'm going to write that out as a CH2 um, with a minus charge. So the other thing to remind you of is that this carbon is the carbon that's going to make that new sigma bond. Right? Now, the other thing that we have a resonance of is we have resonance in the dieno file. So if we look at the dieno file, if we take this molecule, kind of draw it out. Well, here we have our carbon here, right? It's got an H double bond O, H right here, and then down here we have a CH2. All right, so let's write that out as a CH2. All right, so what happens is that that carbonyl can pull electron density away in such a way that we see a transfer of electrons that looks like this. So then what we get down here is we get a CAH2 
with a positive charge on it. Now remember here that that carbon is going to make a new sigma bond. So look, we have a plus and we have a minus. So we want to arrange these two atoms so that they're close to each other. Right? That makes sense. Opposites attract. So that's what we want to do. There's one arrangement that we want to have here. So if we look at that top question right here, right, what we found is essentially this, is that there's a delta minus that's right here. Right? And then in our CH2, we have a delta plus here for our CH2, right? That CH2 here is this. And that's a delta plus that's down here. So remember that this atom is making the new bond and this atom is making a new bond. So we want to arrange these so that they're close to each other. Right? So when we when we carry out this reaction here down below, the way that we want to draw this molecule out is like this. So right, we take our our diene Put your methoxy group on there, right? And then down below, we're going to have our dienophile, and that dienophile wants to have the CHO group here, right? Because remember, that's your delta minus. This is your delta plus. Okay, so we've got our carbon with H and H and an H here, right? Remember, we have and H here, and here, and here. And if you recall, as we approach down from the bottom, those guys are going to get pushed up, and then that will end up in that endo position, okay? So let's see if we can draw out this product. So again, don't forget the double bond there. Now the other thing that we have to remember is that we have an OCH3 sticking off of that carbon. So don't forget that's there. Um, these are just H's, so I'm not going to worry about drawing them out. And then we have a CHO group here. Right, so you're done. Now, to compare your answer to the solution, we'll have to take this and flatten it out. So we're going to get this. And then as we rotate that towards us, that CHO group will be out as a dash. And then we inspect it and we say, okay, well, is this a um, chiral molecule? It is. So we get the enantiomer of this. So we could get that by drawing out the whole top attack, or we can just right, change our wedge and our, and our dashes. So put the wedge here. So we get this. And these are enantiomers to each other. So the other orientation that's possible when we have electron donating groups on our diene is the following. So what we could do is we could have our diene like this and we could put an electron donating group here. So when we do that, we end up having that same resonance concern that we had before. But the only thing that's going to be different here is where that delta minus charge ends up. So right, we're going to come around and we're going to do this. We're going to put our electrons here and then we're going to pop them up to this position here. Now remember that that CH2 that's here, that carbon and the carbon that's right here down below, those are the carbons that are going to be making those bonds to the dienophile. So what this gives us then is our CH2 right, with our double bond, double bond oxygen with a plus charge here, but we'll have that minus charge up above. So that minus charged carbon is going to attract any positive charged carbons as far as the alignment is concerned. So what you'll see is a, is a reactant like this right, plus some type of 
dieno file. And right, recall from our previous example that our delta plus is down at this carbon. So that carbon here is the one that wants to align with the carbon that I circled from up above. Right, so the, again, kind of the red flag to look for this, like how do you know when to look? You're looking to see if you have an electron donating group on your diene. If you see that there, then you need to think about how the dienophile might align with it. So then, as far as writing this reaction out, it's not that different from what we saw in the previous example. So we have our, our diene here, and here's our carbon, here's another carbon. So that example that I gave up above had H's pointed kind of interior, those are your inner. And then this methoxy group on the outer side. And remember we said this is our delta minus here, okay? When we align this down below, we're gonna put our CHO group here, and H is like this. So remember that, that placing this kind of pointed into that direction gives us that endo. And then when we carry out, out this reaction, remember it's these carbons here that are making a connection, and then this carbon making a bond with that carbon. So what we're gonna get is our skeleton is the following structure. Don't forget your double bond there. All right, so recall that these now are gonna get pushed up. So what that means is that that's gonna be an H. That's gonna be an H. The back carbon just has another H. And then this is a methoxy group that's at the lower position. So there's an upper and then this lower position here. And then the CHO group is here. And that's endo, so it points down. And you can put your H in there as a reminder of where it is. And again, that's your answer, but to compare it to a lot of solutions, you're gonna have to flatten this thing out. So flattening out would look like that. Now as you rotate this molecule toward yourself, right, this carbon right here is this position, and that methoxy group is going to be pointing back here, right? And this group, which is here, should be pointing back also. All right, so then that's your product, and then you look at it and you say, well, is, is this a, a chiral molecule? Yeah, so it's gonna have a stereoisomer that's formed here. So that product is gonna have your methoxy group out on a wedge and your aldehyde on a wedge also. And these are enantiomers of each other. All right, so this is your bottom attack that we see here. And the way that you get this is you would do that top side attack.